Argentina, a land of contrasts and surprises, a country that offers something for everyone. From the cosmopolitan cities and the vast plains, to the majestic mountains and the wild coasts, from the rich culture and the delicious cuisine, to the diverse wildlife and the stunning nature, Argentina is a place where you can discover, explore, and create. In this video, I'm going to show you how I visited these amazing places in just five days. Yes, you heard me right. Five days. It was an incredible journey that I will never forget. And I want to share it with you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel videos. This is my trip to Argentina. Let's go. Day 1. Mar del Plata and Quebrada de Humahuaca. On the first day of my trip, I flew from Buenos Aires to Mar del Plata, the most popular beach resort city in Argentina. Mar del Plata is located on the Atlantic coast, and it has some of the best beaches and water sports in the country. I spent the morning enjoying the sun and the waves at Bristol Beach, one of the most crowded and lively beaches in the city. I also visited the aquarium, where I saw some amazing marine animals, such as sharks, dolphins, sea lions, and penguins. I had a delicious lunch at a seafood restaurant, where I tried some of the local specialties, such as grilled octopus, fried calamari, and shrimp empanadas. In the afternoon, I took a flight to Chujoy, where I rented a car and drove to the Quebrada de Humahuaca, a spectacular valley that dates back thousands of years. The Quebrada de Humahuaca was once an important trading route during the Inca Empire, and today it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that showcases the rich history and culture of the region. The valley is famous for its colorful sandstone hills, cacti, llamas, and ancient ruins. I stayed at a cozy hotel in Permamarca, a charming village at the foot of the Cerro de los Siete Colores, Hill of Seven Colors which is one of the most stunning sights in the valley. I had a relaxing evening watching the sunset over the hills and enjoying some local music and wine. Day 2. Buenos Aires Province and Mendoza On the second day of my trip, I woke up early and drove to Tilcara, another beautiful town in the Quebrada de Humahuaca. I visited the Pucara de Tilcara, an archaeological site that contains the remains of a pre-Inca fortress. I also hiked to the Garganta del Diablo, Devil's Throat, a stunning waterfall that is hidden in a canyon. I had a hearty breakfast at a cafe in Tilcara, where I tasted some of the regional delicacies, such as humitas, corn tamales, quinoa soup, and coca tea. Then I drove back to Jujuy and took a flight to Buenos Aires province, which surrounds the capital city of Argentina. The province is home to some of the most attractive and interesting places in the country, such as La Plata, Tiger, Lujan, San Antonio de Arico, and Tandil. I decided to visit Tiger, a town on the delta of the Parana River, where you can enjoy a boat ride or a kayak trip through the islands and channels. I also visited Lujan, a town that is famous for its basilica, which is one of the largest and most impressive churches in South America. I had a late lunch at a Perilla Grill restaurant, where I tried some of the best meat dishes in Argentina, such as steak, chorizo and morcilla, blood sausage. In the evening, I took another flight to Mendoza, the capital of Argentina's wine region. Mendoza is a paradise for wine lovers, as it produces some of the finest wines in the world, especially Malbec. I stayed at a hotel that was surrounded by vineyards, and I had a wine tasting session with a sommelier, who taught me about the different varieties and characteristics of wine. I also had a delicious dinner paired with wine at a gourmet restaurant. Day 3. Bariloche in Cordoba. On the third day of my trip, I took an early morning flight to Bariloche, one of the most popular destinations in Patagonia. Bariloche is located on the shores of Lake Nahuel Huapi, in the heart of the Nahuel Huapi National Park. The park is one of the most beautiful and diverse in Argentina, with glaciers, forests, waterfalls, and wildlife. I rented a bike and rode along the Circuito Chico, 
a scenic route that takes you to some of the most amazing spots in the park, such as the Lao Lao Hotel, the San Eduardo Chapel, the Colonia Suiza, and the Cerro Campanario. I also took a cable car to the top of the Cerro Auto, where I enjoyed a panoramic view of the lake and the mountains. I had a lunch break at a chocolate shop, where I indulged in some of the best chocolate and fondue in Argentina. In the afternoon, I took a flight to Cordoba, the second largest city in Argentina and the capital of the Cordoba province. Cordoba is a vibrant and dynamic city that combines its historic heritage with its modern development. I visited the Jesuit block, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that includes the oldest university in South America, the cathedral, the cabildo, and several churches and museums. I also enjoyed the city's nightlife, which is one of the liveliest in Argentina, with bars, clubs, and theaters. I stayed at a trendy hotel in the city center, where I had a relaxing night. Day 4. Iguazu Falls and Ushuaia. On the fourth day of my trip, I took another early morning flight to Puerto Iguazu, where I visited one of the most impressive natural wonders in the world. The Iguazu Falls The Iguazu Falls are a series of waterfalls that span the border between Argentina and Brazil, forming part of the Iguazu River. The falls are so massive that they can be seen from both countries, and each side offers a different perspective and experience. I started with the Argentine side of the falls, where I walked along several trails and bridges that took me close to the water. I also took a boat ride that took me under the spray of the falls. The highlight of this side was the Devil's Throat, a huge horseshoe-shaped waterfall that is the largest and most powerful of all. Then, I crossed to the Brazilian side of the falls, where I enjoyed panoramic views of the entire cascade from a helicopter or a platform. The falls are located within the Iguazu National Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that protects a rich biodiversity of flora and fauna. I spotted animals such as toucans, monkeys, coatis, and butterflies, or visited the nearby bird park or butterfly garden. The Iguazu Falls are a place where you can witness the awe-inspiring power and beauty of nature. In the evening, I took a flight to Ushuaia, the southernmost city in the world. Ushuaia is located on the Tierra del Fuego Island, at the tip of South America. Ushuaia is a gateway to Antarctica, as it is the main port for cruises and expeditions to the frozen continent. I stayed at a cozy cabin in the woods, where I enjoyed a fire and some hot chocolate. Day 5. Peninsula Valdez and Perito Moreno Glacier. On the fifth and final day of my trip, I took an early morning flight to Trillo, where I rented a car and drove to Peninsula Valdez, a peninsula on the Atlantic coast of Patagonia that is one of the best places in the world for wildlife watching. Peninsula Valdez is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that hosts a remarkable diversity and abundance of marine life, such as whales, dolphins, seals, sea lions, penguins, orcas, and seabirds. I visited Peninsula Valdez between June and December to see the southern right whales that come to breed and calve in the protected bays of the peninsula. I took a boat tour that took me close to these majestic creatures, and I was amazed by their size, grace, and intelligence. I also visited Peninsula Valdez between September and April to see the Magellanic penguins that nest on the shores of Punta Tumbo. I walked among thousands of these cute and curious birds, and I watched them feed their chicks, swim in the ocean, and waddle on the beach. I also saw other animals such as elephant seals, fur seals, sea lions, orcas, dolphins, flamingos, reeves, guanacos, and armadillos. Peninsula Valdez is a place where you can marvel at some of the most amazing creatures on Earth. In the afternoon, I drove back to Trilu and took a flight to El Calafate, where I visited my last destination, Perito Moreno Glacier, one of the most spectacular and accessible glaciers in the world. Perito Moreno Glacier is located in Los Glaciers National Park, another UNESCO World Heritage Site in Patagonia that covers an area of more than 7,000 square kilometers, 2,700 square miles of ice fields, mountains, lakes, and forests. Perito Moreno Glacier is one of the largest and most active glaciers in the park, 
measuring 30 kilometers, 19 miles, long and 5 kilometers, 3 miles, wide. You can visit Perito Moreno Glacier from El Calafite, a town that is the main tourist hub in the area. You can take a bus or a taxi to the glacier, where you can walk along the boardwalks that offer different views and angles of the ice. You can also take a boat tour that takes you along the front wall of the glacier, where you can see and hear the ice cracking and falling into the water. You can also join a guided trekking tour that takes you on top of the glacier, where you can see the crevices, caves, and streams of the ice. Perito Moreno Glacier is a place where you can experience the wonder and majesty of one of nature's most incredible creations. And that's it for my trip to Argentina, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and inspiring. Argentina is a country that has so much to offer, and I'm so glad I got to see some of its best places in just five days. Of course, there are many more places to visit in Argentina that I didn't get to see, such as Salta, El Chalton, El Bolson, Puerto Madryn, Rosario, and more. Maybe I'll come back someday and make another video for you. But for now, I want to thank you for watching and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more travel videos. Also, let me know in the comments what you think of Argentina and what places you would like to visit or have visited. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, stay safe and happy travels.